In today's HVAC training video, we're going to look at what the inside of the tubing looks like after we're done doing low temperature silver soldering for refrigerant lines compared to high temperature brazing with 15% silver braze rod and an acetylene torch with and without flowing nitrogen. Technicians often ask, should I be using low temperature silver solder for refrigerant lines? The issue with it is you'd have to use flux in order to get this silver solder to adhere properly. Now, I really haven't seen any issues with the burst pressure of Stabrite 8 for refrigerant such as r 4 a but the issue, once again, is the flux. And so, manufacturers typically use 15% silver brazing rods, and so do we out in the field typically. Uh, and so, that's what this looks like, but you do have to get it up to 1350 degrees typically in order to melt your rod. Now, there's an issue with that, and we have to prevent the inside of the copper tubing from getting cupric oxide from forming inside the copper tubes. So, with the following scenarios, you should be able to see what happens on the inside of the tubing. So, here's our ACR copper tubing, and we're going to be using a tubing cutter in order to cut it. So, we're tightening the wheel and turning this until it cuts through this soft copper tubing. And so after that happens, we need to prepare the copper. So we're going to be deburring it with this unit bit. And so it's just attached to a drill. It's just a fast way of doing it. And then what we need to do is make sure that we get all the copper shavings out. And so this is all part of the preparation process. We're now going to use the NAVAC battery operated swaging tool. So it doesn't take a real long time in order to swage the tubing. Now we're going to need to clean. We can clean the tubing with a regular wire brush attached to a drill, and we also like to sand the edge just to have it be nice and clean for the solder to adhere. Not only do you have to clean the inside of the swage, you have to clean the outside of the copper tube going into the swage. That's especially true anytime you're doing your low temperature silver soldering. And so you can see we're using our Stay Clean and our Stay Bright 8, and we're going to be using a low temperature propane torch. And so in order for that solder to adhere, we have to add flux. Now flux is corrosive, so you don't want to leave it on the copper tubing uh, when you're done. The problem with refrigerant lines is you are going to need to leave it on <laughs> uh, because you can't get to it. And so it's different than water lines where you can just flush the, the water through the inside of the pipe when you're done. We can wipe off the excess and then we're going to put our gloves on and get to soldering. When you're using a torch to heat the copper tubing, you want to make sure to not directly heat uh, the flux because you end up burning it. So that's why we're over to the side with our swage and so we're actually going to be pulling the solder towards the heat. So you want to uh, make sure that you are keeping the flame away from just where the two pipes connect at. And so you only have to get it up to a certain temperature and then it's going to be hot enough for that solder to be in the liquid state and then it can just flow through the tubing. Just give it a sec just to cool down and then we wipe off and clean off all that flux on the outside of the tubing and then we have our finished solder joint. I want to cut the copper tubing just to show you the inside so we're going to use our tubing cutter once again to cut open our copper tube. So along the perimeter we have a, a decent crown for the solder, uh, but what I really want to show is the flux on the inside of the copper tube here. So you can see a little bit here, it's on the bottom, it's a little bit dark colored, uh, and so that's what's inside the copper tubing, it's left over in there. So here's a different angle so you can see it a little bit, uh, a little bit better, and so we're just looking on the outside now. We've already cleaned the flux off of there, but on the inside you can see the flux is all dry. Now, that's not going to stop the PoE oil in our r 4 system from carrying that throughout the system and just continually recirculating throughout the unit. And so, PoE oil is really going to be cleaning kind of as it's circulating through the inner walls of that copper tubing. Now, let's take a look at the high temperature brazing of copper tubing. Now, we're getting ready to braze this copper tube. We're going to put a swage in it, and so we're going to be using an air acetylene uh, torch setup, so that's this right here, and so this is a B tank, your acetylene regulator, and then over here we have our nitrogen regulator, and so we're going to be flowing three cubic feet per hour through the tube from one side over to the other, and there's going to be a little hole on the cap on this side, and so I want to show you the difference between this setup compared to one where we're not flowing nitrogen while we're brazing. And so what we're going to do is we're going to back this little thumb screw up. We're going to open up our nitrogen tank and you can see we're reading right under a thousand pounds. And then we're going to turn this dial into about 
we'll say just 50 or less than 100 essentially. And then down here, you want to get this ball floating up in the air. So I'll reposition the camera so you can see that. So presently, you can see the ball rising and falling right here. And so we want it to be right down towards the bottom. So we want it right about there, right about at that level there. And so when we're not purging with nitrogen, we can just shut this off. And then right when you're ready again, uh, basically you're, you're just gonna be floating at your same three to five CFH. Now let's take a look at the acetylene tank. So we use our ratcheting service wrench. And right now we have our thumb screw backed in. This has been leak checked. Right here has been leak checked. And so we just crack the tank open just a little bit. And when we're ready to go ahead and light the tip, we would just go ahead and open this up right here. But we're gonna keep this shut for now. And we're also gonna just keep this on the tank in case we need to, to shut it down. So you can see right now we're at about a little over half full. Now that we have our swage done, we're gonna put a cap with a hole in the end on one side and we're gonna flow nitrogen from the other side. Now that would normally happen in a system by connecting from one port over to the other port and allowing the nitrogen to flow through. And so we're gonna take our braze rod and we're gonna go ahead and pre-bend it and light our torch in order to then heat up our inner pipe. So we first wanna heat the inner pipe and then we'll move over to the outer pipe, uh, the outer swage basically. Uh, but we want to first heat up that inner pipe and then we're going to adjust the flame to the left in order to then pull the braze rod over into the inside of the swage. So the braze will, uh, as a liquid form, kind of flow over to the, to the left hand side. Now you're going to have to follow the torch with the rod as you go around this in order to have the pipe hot enough for the rod to melt. Uh, so you're trying to keep that copper tube at maybe around 1500 degrees or a little higher, say 17, 1800 degrees, and in order for that 1350 degree braze rod to melt. So after you do get the braze rod along the inner part of the swage, we're now crowning the outside of it and just kind of putting a lip on the outer rim. So after that's all done, you want to give it a little bit of time in order for the braze to dry. And so you can see that coloration change shows you when you can go ahead and put the wet rag on in order to dry it off. The other thing is you want to make sure to not burn yourself with the high temperature pipe or the steam that is the result of trying to cool this down. A lot of times we're trying to protect uh, devices such as a thermostatic expansion valve or say the service valve from overheating. And so we may already have a, a wet rag right there. So. You just want to be careful not to burn yourself because that steam is very hot. So go ahead and uh, finish wiping this off. All that, that black stuff you see there, that's cupric oxide that we're actually removing even from the outer part of the tube. And that's just because oxygen has been present on the outside. And so now that we have the outside looking clean, we're going to go ahead and cut the, the tubing. Uh, so we're going to cut on one side of this copper tube and also on the other side in order to then show you what it looks like on the inside of the tube. Now that the little tube section's cut out, you can see on the inside it's really clean. So it's, it's bright and clean. This is new ACR copper tubing. And so on the outside, you can see the, the crown of the braze rod right there. You know, the big thing is you just want to make sure that the inside of the copper tubing doesn't have any cupric oxide. Now that we're done, we're going to take off our nitrogen hose and just turn the valve to the off position. And I'm going to cut this extra piece right here because I'm going to take some tin snips in order to kind of cut this thing open and give you a better glimpse on the inside of that copper tube. So we just take our, uh, our red tin snips here and just cut this in half. I prefer to use the tin snips when I'm doing this just so I'm not throwing shavings all around. So you can see the inside of that copper tube is, is perfectly clean and that's all fine. And so let's move on to brazing without flowing nitrogen. We're going to add these caps on the ends again, but we're not going to connect the nitrogen on just to give it a comparable scenario, basically. 
Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and connect these, these swages together. Now the brazing with a high temperature torch, you are able to get the, the braze rod to adhere even if you don't clean the pipe, but it's best to go ahead and clean it, especially on existing line set. You're going to have the best possible joints and the strongest joints uh, for, your, for your braze rod. Now that we have our swage done, we're going to use our gloves and also bend the braze rod and light the torch. Once again, we're going to heat up that inner pipe first before we move to the outer part of the swage. We just want to get that up to temperature first. So I just touched the swage where the two pipes connect just to see if it starts to melt. You don't want to necessarily overheat it and you want to start brazing as soon as you can to avoid the, uh, the heat from transferring through the tubing down the line to whatever, say, components are connected to this tube. Once again, you're just going to follow, um, follow along with the flame and rod all around the perimeter of the tube. And then when you're done, you're just going to back the flame off a bit in order to, to put a crown on the outside of that tube. And so that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just kind of adding an extra little bit of layer right on the edge of the swage. The other thing is you want to get in and get out. So you want to kind of get this done in a fairly quick manner because the longer you heat it, uh, that, that heat's going to transfer down the pipe over to, say, a service valve or, or whatever's down the line. So after that uh, braze is done, we're going to go ahead and let that cool. And as you can see, the coloration change is just about done. And we're going to wipe off the cupric oxide or oxidation basically from the outside of the tube just to clean it up. And so we just want to make sure to wear our gloves and to avoid the hot steam because uh, that is very, very hot. And so after that's done, we're going to go ahead and cut this little swage section out. I'm going to show you what the inside of the tube looks like. Now that we have our copper tube cut out, you can see the inside, there's a bunch of flakes on the inside. And that's the cupric oxide. There's a lot of it inside the tube. And so here we can see uh, we're just zooming in on that little piece. And I'm just going to go ahead and knock it and knock some of the cupric oxide out of the tube and onto this, this white board here. So big flakes, you know, and, and the problem with it is, is it's just going to get recirculated continually throughout the whole system. It's going to get broke off into tiny little pieces and just get continually recirculated. Now I want to show you what it looks like to uh, heat up a copper tube with no caps on the end. So we're not going to braze this uh, copper tube, we're just heating it up. Uh, basically creating that cupric oxide. I just wanted to give you a little bit of a comparison again without the caps on it. So it's just fully open to the surrounding air and oxygen. You can see even that little clamp right there is uh, copper plated, you know, and that's changing color as well. And that's, that's the oxidation as well uh, being created on that. So it's going to turn black right now. You know, while you have the flame on, it's, it's still clean. But the second you take that flame off, that cupric oxide is developed uh, right on the outside and the in, inside of that little copper tube. After we get done cooling this down, I'm going to show you what the inside of that looks like. Now you can see all the cupric oxide falling out and it's, it's covered in it, right? So there's cupric oxide all on the inside. It's all small flakes all over. And here you can see it on the white board and it's covered in it. Now we're going to go ahead and shut off our torch. So now we take our ratcheting service wrench and we just close the, the valve on the top and then we let the gas out of the torch in order to drain the hose. And so after that's all done, we go ahead and close our, our valve on our handle back up again, and then we're going to back out our regulator handle. And so that's how we would store it for safety. Then we go ahead and let our nitrogen out. So we want to make sure to shut our handle on the nitrogen tank. Then we're going to go ahead and turn our regulator handle in, and we're going to allow the, the pressure out of that hose. And then we'll close that when we're done, and then we need to back out our thumb screw on the regulator. 
So here we have our joint that we did our silver soldering on and you can see the flux sitting on the inside so the wheel would end up wiping that off the wall and carrying that and circulating it through the system which would be a problem because it's a corrosive, it's acidic and so that can break down the electrical windings inside the compressor. Uh, this right here, you see it's nice and clean. This is while we were brazing while flowing nitrogen, so it's nice and clean on the inside. This right here is while we were brazing without flowing nitrogen, and you can see the cupric oxide flakes on the inside, and here we have our tube that we just heated up with a torch in general. So you can see all the flakes right here, and these flakes, what's going to happen is the oil is going to pull that right off the walls. It's going to circulate it through the system. That will reduce the lubrication through the system. It can also mix with any of the oil or any oil additives in the system and potentially gum up any moving parts. So here you can see the brazing without nitrogen versus brazing with flowing nitrogen. It's a big, big difference. And here I'm just going to go ahead and cut out this little section so you can see on the inside where we have our flux on the inside of that tube. And so I'm just going to go ahead and bend this out so you can see it. And yeah, you can see that right there, right at the bottom. And hopefully you can see that on the inside. So anytime that you are using silver solder that, you're going to have some leftover flux on the inside and that's, that's not a good thing. I just want to show you what it says on the back of this flux container. It says it's designed for copper to copper and copper to brass connections and ideal for soldering tube joints, but it also says it's not recommended for electrical and electronic applications due to the potential corrosive residue of the flux. Uh, so it also says flux residue should be removed after soldering. And so what we're really talking about is avoiding damage to the electrical wires inside the compressor. And so the refrigerant and refrigerant oil circulate through the system and so would this flux uh, throughout the system for the life of the system. Older systems that had R22 typically had mineral oil instead of PoE oil. So PoE oil is used in R410A, R32, or R454B, or and it becomes very acidic very quickly if you're mixing it with any water or anything like that. And acid in the system can break down the electrical windings inside the compressor. So you don't want to pre-contaminate the system with any type of an acidic compound such as flux. And so if you have acid in the system, it can eat away at the resin separating each one of these electrical windings causing a short to occur and then eventual burnout of the compressor. I have had technicians say, well, I only put a little tiny bit of flux on the joint so that I don't get a lot in the system. But honestly, I would highly prefer technicians to not pre-contaminate the systems and only use the high temperature brazing rods while flowing nitrogen through the system. And instead of brazing, you could use press fittings. And in this case, you can see a cut open press fitting where the O-rings and the copper are all squished in place. I also recommend to pull a deep vacuum below the 500 micron minimum. So I typically target about 200 microns to remove any water vapor from the system in order to protect that POE oil and therefore protect the system. So I hope this video has helped. And if you want to learn more about HVAC, make sure to check out both of our books, which are available over at our website at acservicetech.com. We also have a bunch of free articles there. We've got quizzes, we've got calculators, and make sure to check out the Inverter Mini Split Operation and Service Procedures book, and also the Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning book both available at acservicetech.com and also on Amazon. And hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.